do you see uh, science football moving forward in the next few years in terms of expansion, graduate schemes, etc.? Well, I think science football, um, it brings together people that don't work in professional football with people that do work in professional football. And I think um, the strength of it over the past two years has been that knowledge sharing. Um, the guys that are looking to upskill into the industry and the guys that are in the industry sharing that knowledge, both with other colleagues, but also the guys at the start of their careers. And I think as science football moves forward, I think it'll continue that knowledge sharing base but um, I think give people more of a practical opportunity to actually see demonstrations rather than just seeing presentations on the techniques. Would you say there could be a wider range of attendees or delegates or would you say there's currently a diverse mix of people involved in the scheme? I think the current range is diverse um, in the sense that there are a number of people at the very beginning of their careers and then you have some people with 30, 40 years of experience. I think the conference um, should continue to bring people into the um, conference that already work within football and I think uh, we should make sure it doesn't focus too much on graduates so there's enough knowledge sharing from the experienced people but as John Wooden did say to me he wants to make sure that he always brings the graduates through with him because if we're not upskilling those that aren't currently in the industry then obviously there'll come a point when the, the new talent stops so I think it's important to get both uh, ends of the spectrum. You work with a lot of players the elite players, premiership players, um, how would you say they're taken to the new approach to science and football? <laughs> um, I think as a, as a general, I think science and football uh, is embraced now um, much more widely than it was. I think the reason for that is shown in the fact that there are full-time sport scientists, not only at first teams throughout the professional leagues, but also within academies. I think that's further highlighted by the introduction of the EPPP from next year in the Premier League, where there are various sports science positions that are going to be deemed mandatory as part of the academy setup. So I think sports science as a whole is embraced at each level in the professional game now, right from under eights up to the first thing. I think with Spark, our involvement in that in, um, is highlighted in the fact that our benchmark physical testing is also being embraced by the EPPP in that there is going to be mandatory benchmark physical testing. Um, many of the tests are the same as those that Spark run uh, and I think conferences like today have given us the opportunity with Spark to um, feed back to the clubs that have been tested uh, as to what their data means. Why do you think an organisation like this is essential for the progression of science and football? I think John is clearing up um, the ambiguity of where sports science sits within football and you know, John is quick to point out that there is a very clear defined place for coaches uh, and medics within the game. Um, sports science is a, is a very large term that covers a number of positions and a number of skill sets. Um, the people within the sports science bracket um, don't necessarily sit in the classifications that currently exist. So bringing together a body that covers all of those people gives uh, a knowledge sharing base it gives a security and it gives an identity uh, and I also think it gives credibility to people that work in sports science within the world of professional football.